It is a beautiful day here. I'm gonna say good morning, even though when you watch this, it may not be the morning, but it's a beautiful day here in the Sierra Nevada foothills. I'm here in Sonora, probably the biggest city in Tuolumne County. I'm here at the Mountain Shadow Cemetery. It's a old cemetery, it dates back to about 1927, so it's not really that old. This cemetery, when it opened, was the New City Cemetery, and a couple years after it opened, I believe it's in 1932, the local newspaper, the Union Democrat, decided to have a contest. I said, let's name it something else. One of the prominent women in town came up with the name of Mountain Shadow Cemetery, and it stuck. So that's what it's called now. I am specifically here because I want to find the graves of the guy who designed Knott's Berry Farm Park. Believe it or not, he is buried here. He was a German immigrant who not only came up with the art for the park itself, but he also designed the buildings. He was just a genius of a guy. His name was Paul von Cleven. I'm also here to find the grave of a stuntman and Hollywood performer by the name of Jack Coffer. He's also buried here. Stay tuned on this episode of History Hunters. So this is the opening of the gates way over there. And across the street is a Catholic cemetery. I don't know the date of it. Then you have the American flag here. This cemetery is uh, in a beautiful location. It's on a hill, mountainside, here just east of Sonora. This is obviously the newer section. And it's right over here that I want to find the grave of Jack Coffer, stuntman. A Western actor. He was not well known, but he had an interesting past nonetheless. Jack Laurie Coffer lived from 1838 to 1967. Oh, there he is. I went past him. He's right here. As you can see, he's got a cowboy sitting on a horse atop his grave. Stuntman and TV and movie actor Jack Coffer was born in San Joaquin County on April 1st, 1938. He eventually made his way to Southern California, playing bit parts in movies including Mail Order Bride with Buddy Epson in 1964, My Living Doll also in 1964, Laredo in 1965, in 1967, the year that he was killed. He appeared as a stuntman in the film The Way West, which was released in 1967. Coffer appeared in the TV series Laramie, which ran from 1959 to 1963, as the stunt double for Robert Fuller, who played the character of Jess Harper. Coffer also worked on the remake of the Western film Stagecoach in 1966. On February 18, 1967, the 28-year-old actor was on his way home when he was tragically killed in a freeway crash in the city of Encino. Kevin Connolly wrote of the dangers of being a stuntman in the October 20, 2003 New Yorker magazine. Quote, Stuntmen defy death so regularly that their own tragic deaths under relatively normal circumstances, like those of Dick Bullock and Jack Coffer, who died in car accidents on their way home from work, can seem almost ironic, like one last gag. Unquote. And right next to him is his mother, born in Lodi, Oklahoma, 1917 to 1969. She died in Sonora, California. Now, obviously, because the cemetery only dates back to 1927, there's not a lot of older graves here. I mean, I've been to much older cemeteries than this. You'll find that the older cemeteries usually have little cement markers and grave plots and everything. But uh, Mr. Von Kleben's marker is very distinguished and I studied ahead of time. And I could see that there's like three steps on top of this stone marker here. It's the only one like it in the cemetery. And he's buried right in the corner of the cemetery, probably by design. Here he is, Paul von Kleben, 1891 to 1953, portrait painter, designer, and artist of Ghost Town of Knott's Berry Farm in Buena Park, 
And it doesn't also mention the fact that he was instrumental in designing or redesigning some of the buildings when uh, Walter Knott bought Calico. And right here at the bottom, I'm sure this is based on some of his artwork, shows some pioneers, oxen team and pioneers in a covered wagon. Creator of beauty to mankind, beloved friend of Mary and Theodore Berkner. And I understand that he came to Sonora because of them. Von Kleben was a German native, he was a portrait painter, and he was born in Germany in 1891. He arrived in America in 1914. He started living and working as an artist in the Chicago area almost as soon as he arrived, and he became a U.S. citizen in 1927. He found a bride, Alfreda, in Chicago, who was also a German immigrant. They married in 1919, but sadly she died about 10 years later. She's actually buried back in Chicago, or Cook County, so he stayed there in Chicago for a little while. In 1933, he was asked by the Chicago World's Fair to head up an art colony of 300 to 400 artists for both sessions of the fair. There he met and hired Paul Schwartz. When Paul Schwartz moved to Hollywood, where he made a living drawing caricatures in nightclubs, by 1935, Van Cleben followed him to L.A. He was an accomplished portrait artist, and he painted portraits of Hollywood movie stars like Edward G. Robinson, Jackie Coogan, and other notable people such as Will Rogers, Edsel Ford, and Vice President Charles Dawes. He didn't like the Hollywood lifestyle, the partying, the socializing. He didn't feel like there was anybody serious in art there, so he decided to move on. It's a good thing he did, because he gave the world some amazing gifts. Meanwhile, in Buena Park, Walter Knott was growing pretty frustrated with this artist that he hired to paint a cyclorama at what would later become the ghost town at Knott'sbury Farm. And the artist was just lagging in the work, which was like a 20 by 50 foot curved mural in the Gold Trails Hotel. It was a cyclorama of a wagon train crossing the desert, and it featured some three-dimensional objects in the foreground to add to the effect. And it also had a three-minute recorded narration, animated with lighting effects that transformed the daytime scene into night. I guess the artist just quit because he was so frustrated with the project. Schwartz actually turned on Walter Knott to Von Kleben and said, hey, check this guy out, he's pretty skillful. And so that's the starting of a relationship that led to not only the creation of the Knott's Berry Farm ghost town, but the recreation of Calico Ghost Town in San Bernardino County. The ironic thing is that Von Kleben finished this project within weeks, so I don't know if the project was that far along. It didn't require a whole lot of finishing work, or if just Von Kleben was really diligent about his work, and I think that's probably the case. Von Kleben had not hit it off for the next 12 years, Von Kleben helping to build Knott's Berry Farm. Somebody has placed some rocks here, I think probably is a way to remember him. So to get a feel for how the gold rush towns looked in the Old West, he did some extensive traveling to different sites. He did, took measurements, he took pictures, and he got a feel for the way the buildings should be designed at Knott's Berry Farm and at Calico. And the first buildings that were built that he designed were the Wells Fargo office and the post office there in Knott's Berry Farm. By 1942, he was living in Buena Park, actually at Knott's Berry Farm. He also designed the chapel on the lake at Knott's Berry Farm, which opened in December 1941, just days after the bombing of Pearl Harbor. But inside the chapel was Von Kleben's six-foot, eight-inch painting of Christ. This is the first known instance of a theme park using black light for effect. As the lighting changed, Christ's eyes would appear to open. Guests were awed with the effect. Of course, times changed, and the church was moved out of the park. Von Kleben drew concept drawings for numerous other buildings in the ghost town, such as the Birdcage Theater, the famous Bottle House, and Music Hall. Being a great fan of art and great works of art, Von Kleben encouraged Walter Knott to buy a painting. It was an 1870 painting by Charles Christian Knoll. It was called The Night Watch. He had him put that in the Music Hall, and eventually that painting was donated to the Orange County Museum of Art in 1999. Not would just tell Von Kleben what he had in mind for a project. And then Von Kleben would retreat to his modest studio about home that Knott had erected for him, and he would feverishly work up a design. Not only did he produce detailed concept art for the proposed buildings and the floor plans, he oversaw the construction and the process for converting new lumber into weathered looking boards by the use of burning and sandblasting and scraping, pounding, twisting, 
painting multiple colors and wire brushing. He also personally painted the concrete in the original Pan for Gold attraction to look like rock. Apparently the covered wagons that Von Kleben created were so authentic looking that they fooled the curator of an Eastern museum who had visited and wanted to buy one of them. Von Kleben also helped design some of the buildings and the concepts for Calico Ghost Town in San Bernardino, which was a Walter Knott project. We did a video on that too. A number of his paintings done for Knott's Berry Farm were sold to private collectors when the park held an auction in 2017. However, several of his works are still on display at Knott's Berry Farm. His large painting, which he called Saturday Night in Old Calico, 1888, which originally hung behind the bar in the Calico Saloon, now hangs in the picture gallery. He painted a very large painting of berry fields and a portrait of Rachel Tony Knott, all of which still hang in Virginia's gift shop. He also painted a mural in the Ghost Town Grill, and two large portraits are in the Western Trails Museum. Perhaps his greatest large painting is the landscape of Ghost Town, which hangs in the Chicken Dinner Restaurant. Von Cleveland left his imprint all over the famous Adobe Steakhouse restaurant, which opened in the Knott's Ghost Town in 1946. He not only designed the interior of the original restaurant, but decorated it with 12 of his original Indian paintings. Even the cover of the menus were adorned with Von Cleveland's paintings of Indians. The Steakhouse restaurant paintings were removed and sold in an auction in 2017, with the pieces winding up in the hands of private collectors. His original painting of Chief Whitehorse, measuring approximately 4 feet by 5 feet, sold for $1,553. His portrait of Chief Rain in the Face sold for $3,824. His portrait of Winnetou Indian sold for $1,912. His portrait of Indian Maiden Kiowa sold for $1,434. Navajo Maiden sold for $2,509. The Portrait of Two Feathers Brave sold for $2,031. The Cute Portrait of Washu Indian Papoose, a brochure, and doll sold for $2,629. The Painting of Jesus used in the chapel sold for $1,314. As a side note, the patio of the Steakhouse Restaurant was damaged by fire in November 1950, and Walter Knott himself helped in the cleanup efforts. He's the man at right. In 1983, the steakhouse was renamed Big Jake's Ranch House and later the Family Steakhouse. When the Ghost Rider roller coaster was built in the 1990s and the layout of the park was reconfigured, the steakhouse building was now inside the gates. Management felt that the high-end restaurant couldn't be supported with limited public access, so it turned into Antipastas in 1998 to serve Italian fare. It is now Spurs Chop House. So if you guessed that Paul Van Cleven never remarried, you are correct. He was basically married to his work. He was an artist, he loved it. And well, we hear the term starving artist quite a bit. He was very successful. In fact, when he died in 1953, he was worth $100,000. At that time, in the 1950s, the average American was making about $4,800 a year. And the average price of a house was about $8,200. So he was very successful with his art career. And I'm sure Walter Knott put a lot of greenbacks in his pocket. Such a beautiful day here in Sonora. It's May and the sun's out and it's going to start getting hot in California once again. I came here to the oldest part of the cemetery to show you what's right next door. Some kind of commercial building backs up right to the fence. And I tried to find the grave of Sarah Della Spengenberg. She made her way to California at a young age. Unfortunately, she has no marker. She's buried right here. Not a lot is known about her. She was the first burial here in the cemetery. And as you can see from here, how far it's grown up there, up the hill. As I leave the grave of Paul von Cleven, I want to thank you so much for watching this episode of History Hunters. We are a growing channel. If you haven't subscribed, we would love to have you join us by subscribing. Hit the notification bell. Also, did you know anything about Paul von Cleven and his association with Knott's Berry Farm? Did you maybe work with them? I know sometimes we get people who watch our videos and say, oh, I know this guy or I worked with him. 
Chances are that's probably not the case anymore because he died in 1953, born in the 1890s. Probably nobody alive today that knows him or knew him. But thank you. I'd love to hear what you thought. Join us again on a future episode of History Hunters.